Hello, I'm Niall Rowan. I'm Technical and Regulatory Affairs Officer for the Association of Specialist Fire Protection. Part of my, my remit is regulatory affairs. So I'm looking at different types of regulations that are coming out that affect members and affect the passive fire protection area in, in general. Uh, and of course, many of you will know uh, that the Building Safety Act came out last year and that has a number of requirements, a completely different regulatory regime, a new regulator, provision for product standards and so on. But I'm going to talk about now a consultation which came up from, from DLUC just before Christmas. DLUC is Department for Leveling Up Communities and Housing. It is in effect the uh, the, the department that writes the building regulations and the statutory guides to the building regulations. And they brought out this consultation just before Christmas on three subjects. One is the use of the sprinklers in care home. One subject, another subject was the use of uh, trigger heights for the use of more than one stair in high buildings. And the third item, which I'm going to talk briefly about, is the withdrawal of British standards and classes, the BS 476 series of tests, to satisfy approved document B. Um, the withdrawal of BS 476 has kind of been on the card. It's been, to use that phrase, direction of travel for about 20 years, but it never actually happened. Um, partly because there was no real demand for it, but it's also post Grenfell, there seemed to be a much more tightening up of standards. Uh, I mentioned competency in previous uh, discussions. So the, the, the aim was to remove the BS 476 series in favour of the European standards, which the test methods are generally technically better and more thorough. Uh, and there's also, of course, some embarrassment over BS 476 and Class O in relation to cladding of buildings and that's caused some embarrassment for the department so I think they're quite keen to remove it as quickly as possible which is fine and, and we support that. The problem comes in the area of fire resistance because traditionally approved document B specified the performance in terms of minutes of fire resistance for low bearing capacity, integrity and insulation it didn't ask for a class because we didn't use classes in the British system. The European system, which they want to introduce, or which is already included, which isn't used much, uses classes where a class is expressed in terms of RE and I. Uh, don't ask me what RE and I stand for. It's, it, I believe it's French, but it's, again, it's low bearing capacity, insulation, uh, integrity and insulation. But it's done via a classification standard. So what this means is that, is that if I get 37 minutes integrity and 32 minutes insulation, I get an EI 30 door. So that's, that. it's a kind of rounding exercise, which again is, is, is fairly harmless in terms of, uh, in, in that respect. The, there are several issues that do cause a problem with, with the withdrawal of the BS 476. Um, the first of which, under satisfying the regulations now, or setting a satisfying approved document B now, a manufacturer can do a test, and the test would give the results of, in terms of number of minutes of fire resistance, and if they meet the requirement of regulation, all is fine. But manufacturers don't just make one product, they make many products in different sizes and shapes and configuration. So they do a number of different tests, but they don't test all configurations. Um, because it would be economically impossible. If you take a timber fire door, which is part of my background, it's easiest to understand. A timber fire door can be a single leaf, or it can be a double leaf. It can be single action, or it can be double action where it moves 180 degrees. So it's hung on pivots, or it's hung on hinges. It can be glazed. It can have side panels. It can have over panels. It can be rebated meeting style. It can be butt, butt joint meeting styles. It can have different types of bar mongery. It can have different types of glazing it. In short, you very soon get to, well, I want to prove the performance of my fire door. I need to do 10,000 fire tests. Well, it's not going to happen. Um, so the way we, we, we solve that issue and have done successfully a number of years is by the use of assessments. 
an assessment is the opinion of uh, an individual, normally a laboratory, a U UCAS accredited for carrying out that test, on the, on the performance or the likely performance of that product if it were to be fire tested. And there, there's a format for doing assessments, including qualifications for the assessor, levels and skills of the assessment, primary and secondary evidence that can be used, declaration by manufacturers, and that's given in a document called the PFPF, Passive Fire Protection Forum. Uh, it's a code of practice for undertaking assessments. That's all well and good, and that code of practice is enshrined in approved document B. So what's the problem? If we move to the European classes system, you still do your tests, which are European tests and not British tests, that's fine. But there is no root and no input for assessments. So therefore, to cover the range of products in different size and variation, you either have to do a lot of tests, which I've indicated previously is it's not possible, or you go through a European process called extended application, which is kind of like an assessment, but very rigid. It's rules, calculation methods, and agreed expert judgments that are already drafted and written down in a, in a SEN standard. And because of that, it's a rigid and conservative system. Some of these things have not been written yet. Some of them are very restrictive. Okay, so what's the upshot of this? The upshot of this is that products, the scope of products that are available will be reduced significantly. And also, products are tested at the moment in laboratory conditions for a certain end-use application. And when they get to site, things aren't quite right, which might impact on the fire performance. Guess what we do? We write an assessment to cover it. Or we don't write an assessment. ASFB doesn't write an assessment. But industry experts, laboratories, consultants write assessments to cover these end-use applications. There's no route for doing that under the European system. So you've got a situation where you're going to have a more restricted range of products because they can't classify them all. You're not going to have classes for end-use application, which means you're going to have chaos on site and you're going to have a lot of building sites ground to a halt. For certain products, you won't even, you'll only be able to install what was tested and that's very very limited indeed so that's the first problem the classification problem the second problem is the european test and the british test they're kind of very very generalization about 80 percent the same but the european test uses a different sensing element in the furnace to drive the furnace and what this is called the plate thermometer and what this means is that the fire test in terms of thermal exposure on the European test is slightly higher than the British standard. About 10% on average, but it varies a lot of different periods throughout the test and for different elements. For some elements it's 20%, maybe 30%. So what this means is that if you want a 30 minute fire resisting door tested to an EN standard, it's going to cost more because it has to be a bit thicker or it has to have a bigger intumescent strip or more intumescent protection to the arm mongery. If you've got fire protection to structural steel using boards or sprays or particularly intumescence, then you're going to have to increase the thicknesses on this. Now for some product companies that are, are selling throughout Europe, they've already done the European test and the British test, so they're happy they just plug in the European results. So there's no real testing burden on them. Though the cost of the product will still go up. But there is some industries, particularly the specialist door set manufacturer, specialist door manufacturer, I won't use the term door set, the specialist door manufacturers and architectural arm mongers who work with British standards for a number of years. If they go over to the European system, they're going to have to retest a huge number of products. I've already mentioned the potential combinations and permutations, and that they can't all be covered by, by, by classification. I, I know this is a lot to pick up, but basically it's going to cause an awful lot of problem. And we've been involved in a number of forums, giving presentations to government, to trade associations, to British standards, uh, committees etc 
in order to make them aware of this issue. Hopefully, uh, when the result of the consultation comes out in the autumn, uh, they might still require testing to European standards, but they'll drop the requirement for classification. Uh, the other point is they mentioned a transition period of one year for this, which is completely unrealistic, bearing in mind the large number of tests that need to be carried out and also the fact that waiting times for test furnaces are in the order of six months plus. So one year isn't going to do it. So that's just one facet of some of the regulatory aspect that, that I've been doing.